Welcome back to the Crypto's Key Conversation. We're going to quickly jump into CoinGecko here. We're currently sitting at a $2.08 trillion market cap, currently down 1.2% for the day. Coming down here, looking at the top 10 Bitcoin sitting at 44,211. Ethereum sitting at 3,124. Tether's Tether. Binance Coin sitting at 413. XRP sitting at 84 cents, currently up 7.2% uh, 7 for the day. And as for a seven day period, 36.7%, which is massive. Cardano sitting at $1.17, Solana sitting at $113, Dot sitting at $21, and Terra sitting at $57. Coming over here to the Bitcoin Fear and Greed Index, we're currently sitting at 48. So we're in that neutral range. So we're not in the fear and extreme fear range. We're in that neutral range, which is massive for us. We haven't been even remotely close to this area for some time now. So it's a lot of more positivity and optimism within the market. I wanted to start off this video here with Tag XRP's uh, tweet here. Uh, so former SEC Chairman Jay, K uh, Jay Clayton caught in a lie. So we all have seen this before, but I just wanted to bring it up again. It says Jay Clayton, the former SEC Chairman, uh, will join Apollo's board. February 18, 2021. Uh, this is from Squawk Box on the 23rd of 2021. It says, the companies that I advise, I don't want to be promoting them, but one is an institutional asset manager. Another is what I would call infrastructure. I did not know these companies while I was in government. I was introduced to them after I exited. I did my due diligence as as to whether I would be an advisor or choose to do so. Jay Clayton coming over here. This is uh, Jay Clayton's calendar as of October 1st, 2017 to October 31st, 2017. And as you can see, uh, this screenshot, uh, someone had controlled F and put in Apollo and it types up Apollo, Apollo, Apollo within his calendar. These are meetings, meeting with Apollo, you know? So it's like you claim you, you didn't know about them, but like you have these meetings with them. And then coming down here, this is their uh, filers employment asset of income and retirement accounts, Apollo investment fund. <laughs> Jay Clayton met with Apollo more than once while a chairman. Jay Clayton has investments with Apollo. And then they uh, link this, the 14 general principles of ethical conduct. So I just wanted to throw that up there. And I want to thank uh, Tag XRP for throwing that up. So coming over here, I wanted to listen to this video and show you what JV had uh, tweeted. And this is um, an interview with uh, Chairman G uh, Gary Gensler. And uh, this uh, interviewer here says, why not have a securities analysis if it's unclear already? So then we're going to come in and check this out. Let's listen in. That close quote. Um, you know, while that may not be the most clear statement of, uh, of, of intent, it does suggest that uh, the chair believes that Congress needs to act uh, in order or for most or all stable coins to fall under the SEC's regulatory authority. Uh, yet during his testimony to the Senate, Chair Gensler stated in a somewhat contradictory way that, quote, some of these tokens have been deemed to be commodities and many of them are securities, close quote. So I, I, I'm curious, will you be able to explain why the report did not include any analysis of policy issues under the securities laws as they pertain to stable coins? And was it discussed? And again, given that the SEC is a member of the working group, um, certainly if it wasn't discussed, why not? Um, yes, of course. So the president's working group was convened to view stable coins as a possible way to improve the payment system. And the, uh, the mandate was to identify whether this new possible payment instrument based on a new technology would have the appropriate regulatory framework. And the goal was to identify gaps in regulation. As I've mentioned in my testimony, this pr proposal builds on existing laws and regulations that apply, including SEC regulations that apply to stable coins as a investment asset or a security. So the- Did, did I miss something? I mean, it doesn't look gaps. like there was any analysis that was actually done on that. No, we did not include what the existing securities were, but what is your- oh, hold, on, hold on, I'm sorry, hold on. As is, I'm sorry, Madam Secretary, uh, but it's unclear. <laughs> already. So why would you not do that analysis? If we don't have a clear picture, why would you not have done that analysis? Yeah. So I, I think I would need to defer to the SEC for its enforcement strategy, for its strategies about how to address stablecoin. 
Yeah, if it's unclear, why didn't you do the analysis? Absolutely. And then the fact that they're even having this proposal of, uh, you know, a, a stable coin being an investment form or a security, there's, there, you gain nothing. It's stable. It's, peg, it's pegged to the dollar. It's always one dollar. It may jump up, you know, a half a cent or whatever the case is. But it's like, really? And this is this the, the, the foolery we're dealing with when it comes to, you know, the SEC and their overregulation and, and them trying to stranglehold the um the crypto market coming over here. I wanted to continue with crypto. Eddie had uh, put this tweet up. Says today, Bloomberg, you were encouraged. Uh, you've encouraged these exchanges to come in and get registered. At the same time, uh, t at the same time, many have not, as far as I can tell. And the Gary Gensler's with a big smile says you've noticed that. So let's take a listen into this real quick, and then we'll talk about uh, what I want to bring up about this video. As to your question about crypto. Um, the agency is really just looking out for investors and many of these tokens, I'm not trying to prejudge anyone, but many of these tokens have the attributes of securities. They're raising money from the public and the public is anticipating profits based upon the efforts of others. And so uh, we've brought a number of actions. We're trying to work with the various crypto platforms, the exchanges, the lending platforms to come in, get registered, find where we can uh, to adjust our rule set to get the investor protection for the public. As you say, you've encouraged the exchanges to come in and get registered. Uh, at the same time, a lot of them have not, as far as I can tell. Yeah, uh, yep, point you've do you have that. Okay. As so to come in, see where we can adjust our, our the way we regulate them, come in and have this conversation with us, see if we can meet each other in the, in the middle ground. <laughs> Who are you fooling? It's quite evident that that's not the case. I mean, look at, you know, Coinbase's lending platform stuff that they wanted to get going, shot that down. Then you've been meeting with Ripple and their team for years now. So it's like, no one's going to want to come in because all you're doing is coming in to get information to, to further attack them with the information that you gain when they come in and so-called have these communications with you. No wonder why no one's coming in. And this is the stuff we're dealing with when it comes to RSC and Chairman Gary Gensler. Uh, I wanted to cover this uh, this tweet from, uh, did I get the wrong one up here? One second. Uh, I just wanted to cover this up real quick. It's uh, Anon1974 An On had put this up because you know, Gary Gensler goes, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it probably is a duck. He goes, if it looks like corruption, behaves like corruption, and there's evidence that it is corruption, then probably it's corruption driven by Gary Gensler SEC. And I thought that was hilarious because, like, quite honestly, it's it's quite evident. You know, you're not protecting the investors you're so-called set out to protect. You're protecting yourself and, and your buddies. You know, who are all those individuals and those uh, parties that you're, you're trying to protect with this whole Ethereum free pass and this, um, you know, suppression of uh, the crypto market and so on. Uh, moving on here. Um we're coming over here. It says John Deaton. So we talked a lot about the Freedom of Information Act uh, request that's been coming out from Johnny Deaton. And then you have Empower Oversight uh, has their own going. But I wanted to cover Johnny Deaton's first. It says the fi finding the SEC to get documents being held from the public. This appeal is for the correspondence between Clayton and uh, Tom Cotton and Mark Cr uh, Mike Kripo and NSA Ratcliffe related to the SEC's lack of clarity, suppression of innovation, and favoring certain assets over others. Why not Purdue? So uh, this is, if you want to come in and take a look at this, this is Johnny Deaton's, uh, Deaton Law Firm's Appeal for Freedom of Information Act request. And then continuing on here, there's a lot There's a lot of stuff happening. So it's not just Ripple versus SEC. It's not just Ripple going, you know, battling their side and their position against the SEC. There's so many other things going on. You have Crypto Law US. You have Johnny Deaton in the class action lawsuit. You have this Freedom of Information Act. You have the international uh, side of, you know, XRP investors. And now, now they have their own platform to share their voice. And then you have, you know, uh, Empower Oversight. And then I'll cover uh, Jason, who's also, you know, bringing the fight to the SEC on the other end. So right here it says crypto law breaking document released by Empower Oversight reveals SEC found approximately 1000 pages of records detailing communication between William Hinman and Simpson Thatcher while he was in office responsive to Washington Group's uh, Freedom, of, Freedom of Information Act request. So you can come through and, and read this, uh, but I'll, I'll read this part here. It says, during the calls, Ms. Verdi and Mr. Uh, Tallarico asserted that the SEC has reviewed the record searches, identified an error with them, and after correcting for the error, had located approximately 1,000 pages of records responsive to request number 2102531, uh, Freedom of Information Act, and, will still work, and still working on request number yada, yada, yada. 
However, they claim that the SEC's uh, no records response request numbers. So pretty much, pretty much the pressure that's being applied to the SEC when it comes to these, you know, uh, FOIA uh, request, it's, it's adding pressure and stuff's being uncovered. There's more stuff being revealed. Continuing on, Crypto Law says the document appears to be a letter of uh, memorializing apparently combative conservatives between uh, Empower Oversight and SEC staff over the claims of non-responsive documents now subject of litigation and groups investigation of potential conflicts of interest of him and Clayton and Berger. Berger. Uh, they continue on in 128 call a one in 128 call sec staff claimed an error in previous search was corrected and the more uh and the more than 1k documents were uncovered linked to the uh the hinman speech hinman since a uh, simpson thatcher request other searchers are ongoing empower oversight further demanded details on search methods so that's huge like how are they going about these search methods you know are they kind of only pulling pulling out certain documents because clearly earlier it was like okay you know we haven't searched we haven't found anything now there's a thousand documents being searched like but okay how are you conducting your searches is you know that's important information uh continuing on here it says read the full document here uh the behind the scenes detail of the sec staff fighting this group's investigation is why congress needs to step up and conduct an independent investigation on this matter absolutely that's absolutely massive congress definitely needs to step up and and bring that investigation on there um Johnny Deaton had tweeted this. He says, please read the written appeal that uh, Jason Foster. Here we go. Jason Foster right here. Uh, he is the, let's come in here, uh, founder and president of Empower Oversight. So Jason Foster is the head of this Empower Oversight who's bringing this FOIA uh, request uh, to the SEC. Served on SEC. It is the best FOIA lowering I've ever seen. This case has never been about whether XRP was or is a security. Now it's about democracy, freedom, transparency, and a free market system. So it's absolutely massive. We have, you know, these people stepping out, you know, to, to do the right thing. They see wrongdoing and they're trying to find a way to fight the good fight and bring the fight to the negative players and negative actors to surface the truth. We as XRP and Ripple investors in the crypto market have the truth on our side. So when it comes to, you know, the SEC, the uh, Jay Clayton, uh, William Hinman, and, you know, the Ethereum free pass, all parties that are involved, they don't have the truth on their side. We have the truth on our high, on our side. And there's so much that's been surfacing when it comes to the scandal that's been going on behind closed doors. So the fight's going to continue on. And I'm glad that we have Johnny Deaton, Jeremy Hogan, Jason Foster, Empower Oversight, uh, Digital Asset Investor, all these great players within you know uh, the industry on our side, on the good side, on the right side, you know, fighting the good fight and helping this space not be, be suppressed or hindered and further push back when it comes to, you know, over-regulation. Continuing on here, Johnny Dean also says, some people like the, the digital asset investor have said the SEC didn't see John Deaton coming. Well, John Deaton didn't see Jason Foster and Empower Oversight coming. I tip my hat off to you, sir. I tip my hat off to you, sir. I speak for 65,000 people when I say thank you for your demand of transparency. So that's absolutely massive. Um, and then obviously there's been a lot of love that's been shown in this. And I just want to, you know, thank Johnny Deaton and, and all parties involved that's truly putting out the great information and, and bringing the fight to the SEC and, and you know just like I said trying to fight the good fight because it's absolutely massive without you guys I mean we wouldn't we wouldn't know what's going on we would just literally just be things will be suppressed and things will go on how they usually go on you know the the bad players get away with things they become richer whatever the case is while the little the little people out here just kind of barely fend through life you know, working their butts off just to make, you know, ends meet. So that's absolutely massive. I wanted to end on this, uh, this tweet here. Uh, this is by DJ Peter Voss. It says, Google searches for a ripple up 96% in past weeks worldwide. So that's absolutely massive. Obviously, we've seen a, a big price increase when it comes to uh, XRP. Right here, we have in the past seven days, 36%. So that's absolutely massive. I mean, look at this, look at this right here. That's huge. You know, who, who, who knows where this market's going to go? Obviously, we have stuff coming out with, uh, you know, the CPI numbers coming out, see what inflation's sitting like. So who knows what's going on with this market? But we know when it comes to Ripple and XRP, we're on the right side of history. We're on the right side of law and we have truth on our side. So just a matter of time for this thing really takes off. With all that being said, stay strong out there. Be safe.